we know that both QR codes and data matrix codes are examples of what are known as two-dimensional barcodes, or simply 2D codes. Both types of barcodes are gaining popularity among manufacturers, even in very different methods. 2D codes may expand item labeling to communicate brand message and give possibilities for domestic track and trace and anti-counterfeiting methods. But which two-dimensional code should you use for your corporation? The purpose of this video is to provide you with an overview of the primary distinctions that exist between QR codes and data matrix codes, allowing you to make an educated choice on the type of two-dimensional code that will best serve your needs. Let's first go through the differences between a data matrix code and a QR code before we move on to discussing the most effective one among both. A two-dimensional barcode known as a data matrix stores information in cells that are either black and white or have contrasting dark and bright colors and are organized in a grid. Data matrix codes may be read in any direction, unlike 1D barcodes. This differs from 1D barcodes. International Data Matrix created Data Matrix in 1994. The maximum number of alphabetic and numeric characters that may be stored in a data matrix is 2335, which results in an increase in the number of rows and columns that are contained within the matrix itself. Data matrix codes are typically in the shape of a square, but they can also be in the shape of a rectangle. These codes are constructed from an assortment of bright and dark square dots, also known as cells, which are placed in a grid, also known as a matrix. Even though they are printed in black and white, the majority of the time, data matrix codes can be printed in a variety of color combinations, as long as there is adequate contrast between the dark and light cells to ensure that they are readable. Data matrix codes are characterized by an L-shaped pattern that is located on one side of the code. This pattern creates two solid borders that are adjacent to each other. This so-called finder pattern guides camera scanners to the correct location of the barcode. Using a data matrix code scanner or an omnidirectional camera scanner, it is possible to scan data matrix codes from any angle, ranging from 0 to 360 degrees. Although the cameras on certain smartphones are physically capable of scanning data matrix codes, many smartphones do not have the functionality built in and will require a third-party app in order to retrieve the information contained in the code. A quick response code, often known as a QR code, is another name for a two-dimensional barcode. QR codes, like other types of 2D codes, have the property of being omnidirectional, which means that they may be read from any direction. The Denso Corporation of Japan is credited with developing the QR code in the year 1994. The number of rows and columns that make up a QR code determines the maximum amount of alphabetic and numeric characters that it can hold. QR codes can store a maximum of 4,296 characters. A QR code is made up of squares that can be either dark or light in color, and they are laid out in a grid against a background that is contrasting. QR codes can be printed in a wide variety of colors, despite the fact that they are most commonly seen in black and white. This is provided there is adequate contrast between the dark and light cells in the code. A finder pattern consists of three identical square structures that are situated in the top right, top left, and bottom left corners of the code. This pattern is included in QR codes to assist scanners in recognizing the code. In the same way that data matrix codes can be scanned from any orientation, QR codes may be scanned using a camera scanner or a specialized QR code scanner. It is also possible to use the camera of a smartphone to read QR codes. In recent years, a number of mobile phone manufacturers have begun to incorporate QR code reading capabilities into the default camera capability of their products. In customer-facing applications, this gives QR codes a slight advantage over data matrix codes since customers may be able to scan a code directly from their phone camera without the need to utilize a specialized app. This gives QR codes a slight advantage over data matrix codes. Both data matrix and QR codes are examples of two-dimensional barcodes, which can carry any and all of the information that is typically included in linear or 1D barcodes. The Global Standards Organization GS1, is responsible for the development and maintenance of global standards for various forms of barcodes, such as data matrix codes and QR codes. This indicates that data matrix codes and QR codes are both capable of carrying all GS1 ID keys, 
including a global trade item number, which is a one-of-a-kind number that is acknowledged all over the world and is used to identify products. Both codes may contain expiry dates, serial numbers, and batch or lot numbers. The codes may also include URL that connect clients to an external website with allergen, lifestyle, recipe, and use information. Both barcodes fix errors. Unlike a typical 1D barcode, the data can be read even if the code is broken or missing components. Read Solomon error correction requires adding backup data to a code. This method corrects both codes' errors. Minor differences between the two codes enable them to be used for different purposes. Data matrix codes are noticeably smaller than QR codes and they give great data density in a very tiny size. Because of their high data density in such a small size, they are a perfect alternative for designating specific product pieces, where space may be limited. When it comes to labeling small electronic components, the Electronic Industries Alliance of the United States suggests using data matrix. In addition, data matrix codes are the only two-dimensional codes that have been granted approval by GS1 for use on regulated healthcare products. Data matrix codes are also the sort of code that is used by default in automotive and aerospace applications. In comparison, data can be stored in a QR code that is both larger and more dense than in a data matrix code. Furthermore, unlike data matrix codes may only encode information in numeric and alphabetic characters, QR codes, which were created in Japan, can incorporate kanji and other multi-byte character encodings. This makes them suitable for use with non-European languages, whereas data matrix codes are only capable of encoding information in numeric and alphabetic characters. The QR code and the data matrix code are both examples of public domain codes, which implies that anyone is allowed to use them without having to pay a fee or obtain a license to do so. The International Organization for Standardization makes available for public consumption the published specifications as well as the print requirements for each code ISO. Both of these codes provide choices to encode more data than a conventional one-dimensional barcode, and both of them can be used to deliver additional information for the purposes of internal traceability as well as consumer marketing. Despite their differences, both of these codes can be used in very similar ways. However, in practice, data matrix codes are most commonly used for internal product identification and anti-counterfeiting purposes, whereas QR codes have become the preferred format for most consumer-facing applications. As with any product labeling, it's critical to make sure 2D codes are printed accurately by using the right printing program and a code verification system to confirm the finished code's quality and correctness. While data matrix and QR codes have a higher error tolerance than standard 1D barcodes, it is critical to ensure that codes are clean, crisp, and correct so that customers can use them efficiently and retailers and others in the supply chain can trust them. Code verification devices, such as Domino's R-Series, allow you to scan codes after they've been printed to ensure that they fulfill print quality criteria and to double-check data accuracy. So what are your thoughts on this video? Which one do you think would be more efficient in the near future? Let us know down in the comment section. Thanks for watching everybody and just before you go, Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. With that said, take care and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.